Hello, I'm Dennis O'Donnell, Vice President of Precision PCB Services, Inc., and we are the BGA WeWork Experts. Welcome to our shop. Today, I wanted to demonstrate to you the Shuttlestar model SV530. Um, this is a newer addition to our line of Shuttlestar products, and it's uh, similar to all the other Shuttlestars, except this one here has a lower or a smaller area heater so that we can lower the cost. Um, so basically, the Shuttle Star, we have around six models now that we distribute. Um, and they're mo we're mostly focused on the split vision systems. And those uh, split visions have the camera assist. So most of the uh, split vision systems are going to be all the same format. They're going to have upper and lower heaters. Um, they have a 1200 watt upper, 800 watt lower. And then the software that runs them is, sim is pretty much the same, the way you're going to set the profiles and the machine base. The difference in the machines is as you go up, they have um, larger and um, what would you call more efficient area heaters. And so if you're doing um, large bores with a lot of copper and ground plane, then you want a larger heater. But if you're doing mostly bores, about standard bores, you know, around 15 inch or less, um, probably anywhere to 15 layers. Then you can start with the uh, Shuttle Star SV530, which is entry level, and it's got the smaller area heater. Um, all the machines, again, they have um, high resolution cameras, high, high resolution monitors, so your vision and everything is going to be the same. As you step up, you'll get more automation, uh, and I can say basically the, the larger machines are going to be for larger boards. Uh, so let me give you a, um, a little bit more information on this um, why you would want to buy a Shuttle Star. Um, if you compare to the compare to the Shuttle Star brand to other manufacturers, um, and when you're shopping for a machine, um, there are some considerations that you would want to look into, or I would suggest you look into. Um, the Shuttle Star here is fully self-contained. It's controlled by a PLC with solid-state relays, um, and so what that means is it's more compact more efficient compared to a machine that has a computer or a PC control. If the PLC should fail, you're looking at a lower cost, usually around $500 to replace a PLC if it failed in the future, versus the manufacturers that make machines with a PC control could run anywhere from $3,000 and up to replace the PC. Um, in my experience, the PLCs also tend to have a longer life than a personal computer. So um, personal computer control outside of um, in my opinion, it's old-fashioned. Mostly factory automation, industrial automation nowadays uses a PLC. Um, another thing you want to look for is how the machines are, are built and run. Um, again, all the shuttle stars, they're modular. They're PLC controlled with solid-state relays. You'll find a lot of companies are building the, um, the control and everything all into one circuit board. And what that means is that if a part fails, any part fails, you have to replace the whole circuit board. Um, whereas when a modular machine fail, components fails, you um, only have to replace that particular component. Uh, these ones with the circuit boards, in our experience, what happens is the circuit boards control all of the heaters, the top, bottom, and area. And they have a very small um, voltage regulator here that controls the heaters. And what happens is if, you, if you're using a high usage, we're using these every day, eight hours a day, pretty much running them nonstop, then these voltage regulators will tend to fail. And then you end up buying a new board, having to buy a new board, which is about anywhere from five to seven hundred dollars. Our shuttle star units, since they're modular, they use a separate heater relay. And these type of relays, they're heavy duty to run the heaters. They'll last anywhere five to 20 years or more. So they're just real heavy. You can run your machine all day, nonstop, you know, chip after chip. You don't have to worry about your relays going out. And so you can see, I don't know if you can see in here, but these are very small um, regulators. And they're about maybe a half inch square, where you've got this heavy duty ceramic thing that really up, up, takes the heat. So, um, like I said, when you're shopping for a machine, if you're out there on a trade show floor looking for any machine, um, you want to ask, is this machine module PLC controlled? Is it modular? Or does it everything put in one circuit board, which can be, um, like I say, more headaches down the road. So now I'm just going to go through the basic operations of this machine. 
Uh, it's very simple to use. Um, it has a touch pad that's in a drawer here, so if you want to move it around, you just put the drawer in. Uh, again, the machines are light, they're fully self-contained, so they have their own internal air, their own internal vacuum. Um, so pretty much, uh, I think it weighs about 150 pounds. You can pretty much move it around um, and put it anywhere you want um, that has a 220 volt outlet. Uh, so it's like, say, it's not like some machines, they're hard plumbed and they're pretty heavy and you don't have the versatility if I want to move from a different shop to another uh, shop area. Um, it's not that easy. So these ones, like I said, we pretty much, they're portable. You have a lower heater here that's focused hot air on the bottom of the, on the, on the chip area on the bottom of the board. We're just going to put this in here. And you have adjustable clamps. This particular machine will do up to 20 inch wide, I think about 24 inch depth. Um, and again, you can move it back and forth, left and right, like this. So we have our lower spot heater and we have our upper spot heater. These pretty much do the, all the work to reflow the chips. Uh, you have your area heater, and what this does is it preheats the rest of the board. And what that'll do, um, the more area heat you can use on a board, the less heat you have to use in the chip area. Um, so, and then so you get reduced warpage, and then you get re reduced, or basically you install the chip with minimal heat required. So you, you'll have a longer chip life. You don't have to worry about heat breakdown on the chips. Uh, so what I'm going to do, this is a um, manual vision system. So everything from the SP530, uh, the SP550, and the SP560 have a manual vision system. So that means, when it's manual, that means you pull out the vision system by hand. It was back, forth, left, right. And basically, all we're going to do is we're just going to center this in the center here. And you have a blue light, which shows our top heater pickup tube in the nozzle. And then you have a yellow light that shows the circuit board. And we can adjust these lights so that we can differentiate where the chip is and where the circuit board is. Now I'm just going to center this chip into the nozzle. And once we get it fairly centered, then we have micrometer adjust. We have up-down micrometer adjust, left-right micrometer adjust, and you can fine-tune it with the micrometer adjust. What you can see here in the picture is the blue is our outline of our heat nozzle. And then we have in the center a round circle on blue. That's our pickup tube. And then the the green with the goldish light, here we have our chip in the center. Um, the SV530 um, has a zoom in and zoom out here on, on the side of the machine. So I can zoom in here. I can zoom out. It has a, I think about a 27 time or more zoom. Let's see which one this has. This has, yeah. Yeah, this particular mean machine has uh, over 27 times zoom, uh, which you probably won't ever use. Like we're just going right, right up here. Is about this is only two times zoom, and you can see it's pretty, pretty um, high resolution. So I've got my chip centered. We we're talking about the Vision Assist. So the SB530, SB550, and SB560 have the manual vision. Um, when you get it up to the uh, SB560A and the SB6250, those are higher end machines. They have motorized um, vision systems that have auto pickup. Everything moves automatically. So there's advantages and disadvantages. If you're going to be doing a lot of the same chip um, over and over again, then the automated is nice. Um, but for the price, it's about twice the price of this machine. If you're doing a lot of different types of chips, different sizes. This is nice because I can sit there and I can move around from corner to corner. And when I'm placing the chips, I can get a real time uh, vision of each ball that I want to inspect. So for right now, we have the center where we want it. We're just going to do a, a pick and place. And so what I'll do is I'll go to my screen here and I'll, I'm just going to go to one of my commands and it says pick up. And simple, I just simply press pick up and the machine will go down and pick up the chip. Can we have our own internal vacuum? No reason to connect any external air. So once the machine picks up the chip, I'm going to pull out the vision system, and we're going to line up our solder balls to the board. So we'll line up our BGA to the board. So what you can see here 
our balls are a blue color and our pads are a goldish color. What I want to do is I'm going to zoom in a bit, wait for the autofocus to kick in. And so what I want to do is my, I want to line up my balls to my board. So the pads are pretty focused. I can try and focus a little bit more if I want on the pads. So we just, we just fine focused our, our PCB pads. And now we're going to go and I'm going to touch our adjust here. And I can move the head up and down and, and adjust the solder balls. And so what I want to do is I want to get the solder balls lined up with the pads on the top. Right now we're looking at the top edge. Now I'm just going to go directly down to the bottom edge. And they're pretty lined up. If I needed to, if they were off a little bit, I have a, a Z axis. I can turn this, I can turn the chip and line them up. But there's no reason to, to um, mess with that. They're pretty much right on. So I'm going to go back to the top here. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'm just going to make sure that my balls are even with the pads all the way across. So I can see all the way across, they're lined up 100%. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to zoom in. Just going to go towards the center of the chip. And you can find focus just a bit there. Going to make sure that we're lined up. So what I do is I lined up balls. I can turn the light up a little bit if I want. And so I have gold pads and I just want to see the blue halo of the balls around the pad. And that's 100% on the pad. That's good. We've got a shutter vision system. We're going to pick our command. We say we want to solder. So I just press the solder button. This will go down and place the chip. We can turn our external light on here. Just watch it. We'll make sure that it has a uh, clean pickup. And now it's going to back off. That's called the rebound. We have it set so that there's a, about a two to three millimeter gap between the pickup tube and the chip. And now it's running the profile. And you can run profiles anywhere from one to eight zones. A uh, typical profile is usually three to four zones. Uh, but right now, this is just running the profile. It's running the top, bottom heater, and the area heaters. And it's going to heat up the chip and reflow it. Uh, at this point, I'm not going to do a uh, complete reflow on this. I want to save the demo board. So I can stop it. And what happens once it stops, it backs up, and then it has top cooling, bottom cooling, cross-band cooling. So you have a, usually about a three minute, once the machine's fully heated, from a fully heated to cool down is about three minutes to start the next board. So you have pretty much rapid heating. Uh, this is another thing to look for on when you're shopping for machines. You want to make sure you have a cool down fan. You don't want to sit there and wait for your heaters to have to cool down at room temperature or use an external vent. That takes time and it's rather inconvenient. Uh, so once this runs through its time, time, you can set the time how long you want the cooling fan to run. It will automatically go back to home position and reset. If um, I want a manual override, I just press the up down arrows and I can reset it myself here. So I'll just turn the, everything just turned off. So that's the demo of our SV530. Um, if you have any questions, you can go to my website. It's www.pcb-repair.com. Or give us a call anytime, toll free, 888-406-2830. All of our machines come with a one-year parts warranty, a lifetime technical support. Um, training uh, and installation is available. And we also do training installation on uh, BGA WeWork Process. And we provide training, installation, and repair on any brand of machine, not just Shuttle Stars. We work on Zuma, we work on WDS, we work on SRT, AirVac. So um, we're a full service um, repair shop, but we're a distributor of primarily Shuttle Star BGA workstations because we think these are the best machines for your money. So looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.